today we're going to be going over your uh, Salem Hemisphere here. We're going to be starting right up front here with our tongue jack. Uh, basically with the tongue jack, you're going to have two switches on this guy. The first one on top is just going to be a little light. So for some reason you had to hook up in the, at nighttime, you're able to see. Then the other one here is so that you're able to raise and lower the front of the camper. Basically this is so whenever you're getting on and off the tow vehicle, but this is also how we level the camper from front to back. I do always like to recommend while you're still hooked to the tow vehicle, make sure you're level from side to side first. Take a little carpenter's level, set it right inside the doorway, side, you know, lengthwise. Make sure, you know, you don't have to set some blocks down and then roll onto them. You know, let that vehicle do the work for you. And then once you've unhooked from the tow vehicle, level front to back uh, with this guy, and then you're gonna lower your stabilizer jacks. Those guys are actually motorized. The switches are gonna be located on the door side of the coach, and I will show you guys those. Here, we'll go ahead and show you the front one right here real quick. Basically, you're going to have this one here that's going to control the front jacks. And then you have one in the back that will control the rear. Basically, you got your extend. And it usually will only bring down one at a time. Once the other one usually senses pressure, then the other one will start going. And usually, once they hit the contact, they start gaining pressure. You'll hit it. Kind of hear that motor kind of start to whine. It's telling you that it doesn't have much more oomph in it. So usually it's just meant for stabilizing the camper. And then you got your retract. And once we go around the coach, I'll show you where the rear one is located. Basically, you're gonna have the same style switch, it's just located at the back of the unit. Next, we're gonna have our propane tanks. You have two 20 pound cylinders. These guys have both been filled minus what was used to test the propane system with. This guy here is your regulator. Pretty much it tells you, one, it tells you which tank you're using with this little notch right here. But as you see, it's showing red that it doesn't have any propane flow. If we turn this guy on, as you see, it just flipped to green, telling us that we have a propane flow. This is designed to where you can have both tanks on. Once the one tank that it is pointing at is emptied, it will start pulling from the other tank. You ain't gonna know that though, unless you come out here and look at this guy and you're gonna see that it's reading red showing that, hey, that tank is empty. We, we usually just like to recommend one tank at a time. Back behind is where our battery is located. It's a 24 series battery. Deep cycle marine RV style. And this guy here is just our cover for our propane tank. You do have two LED lights here located on the outside. That switch is actually located in our control or in our front storage compartment on our door side of the unit. We'll show you that when we come back around, but we're going to go this way right now. So right over here on this sidewall, we're going to have a couple things here. One is going to be your solar controller panel. Basically, this just helps monitor the battery. And once the battery gets below a certain level, It'll allow the surge coming from the panels on the, on the roof to come through and charge the battery for us. Basically, there isn't really a whole lot you have to do with this guy, um, except if you get a different style battery, you'd go in here and change the battery uh, setting for how it um, will charge that battery. And then up above here is where our battery disconnect is located. Basically, what this does is it disconnects the camper from the battery, so if anything was left on, it would not drain the battery on you. Uh, Yes, you got the solar panels to help charge that battery for you, but if the fridge is a 12 volt style fridge, it will drain, the solar panel cannot keep up with that fridge, basically. But that key must always be in the on position whenever you're plugged into sure power or you're hooked to a tow vehicle pulling the unit. All right, as we go further down here, we're gonna have our water heater. All right, so with the water heater, you're gonna have this guy right here. This is your anno rod. This guy starts out the size of a dime and will work itself down the size of a coat hanger. Uh, basically, as you see what it's doing right now is it's actually attracting the impurities that's in the water or the calcium and uh, it starts eroding this rod away and not the tank because it is a steel tank. Uh, basically, this guy will go right down here and then gets threaded in here. It is a one and one sixteenth socket. That, that guy will go in there. 
This guy is a gas and electric model. Uh, for the electric side, that is located down here. There's one important thing that you must note though, is that you have to have water inside the water heater before you turn that electric switch on. Okay, that is very important. And uh, even with the gas side as well, uh, you just gotta make sure there's water in it. Uh, at this time, uh, this unit should be winterized. So there's actually two bypass valves on the back side of this water heater that are turned right now, not allowing water into the water heater. Uh, when we step inside, I will show you where that is located. It's gonna be located in the bedroom and I will show you guys where that is at once we uh, step inside. So next we're gonna have our drain outlets here. So basically you got two gray handles for the gray tanks. Basically one is the sink and shower, uh, bathroom sink and shower. The other one is gonna be just your kitchen sink. And then you got your bigger one there. It's gonna be for the black tank. And as you see, that's gonna be got a black handle. Uh, one important thing to note is never leave the, uh, the black tank valve open. Most people at a, you know, that are at, staying a while at a campsite will just leave the sewer hose hooked up to the dump and then just leave that valve open. You do not want to do that. You got to have some kind of liquid in the bottom of that tank or your business is going to get stuck to the bottom of it like a spit wad. And then from there, it's going to start uh, forming uh, Poop Mountain, excuse me for the nastiness. All right, so next, it is also labeled here, our low point drains are located here. Basically, these guys are gonna be, where are they? They're off a little bit. So they're actually tucked right back in here. There's gonna be a red and a blue line. They're tucked right up in here where my hand's located. It's a little tough to get to or see, but these guys here are the lowest points of the water lines in the coach. Basically, whenever you're done camping, I always like to recommend that you would take them off open up a faucet inside and as you're pulling home that air is going to flow through those lines and push any excess water out for you that way you don't get that rotten egg or that stagnant water kind of smell going on all right it happens quite a bit a lot of times what happens is a lot of people won't actually empty out the water heater they just leave that water in there and it just sits there and it gets stagnant and bad uh, once again getting all the water out you would actually remove that anode rod out of that water heater when you're done camping to get the, all that water out uh, so this dash here is going to be our furnace, pretty much your intake and your exhaust. Uh, you don't want to put anything in front of it. That's what the caution sticker is. Uh, we do usually like to recommend uh, mud dauber screens. So it keeps the mud daubers out of there from building nests and the wasps because they can fly through the ductwork and actually get inside the camper through there. And we don't want that. Uh, and then up above here is where our shower port is. Uh, basically your options are hot and cold water. Uh, I will show you inside. The shower head is usually about the same as what's going to be out here. It's going to have a little stop sprayer port on it because your water heater is only six gallons. Um, basically, you're going to see. Come back to that in a second. Uh, these guys here, you're going to have two holes: one on this side, one on the other side. Basically, this is going to be the manual crank option for if something happened to the motors. You do still have a way to bring the slide room in. Basically, though, it is a crisscross pattern. So the connection on this guy here is going to bring the other slide room in. And then when you go to the other side, when the room's in, that's when the tool's going to go through and connect to that port and then bring this slide room in or vice versa. You're on the other side, you're underneath the slide room and you're going to crank it to bring it in. It's going to bring this one in, bring your tool over through here to bring the other side in. This guy here has got our 50 amp power cord, comes with the unit. Uh, basically when you go to put it on it's at a slight angle you'll put it in there you got to kind of wiggle it to get it nice and seated in there and then it will actually twist it will twist clockwise to lock into place and then you got this guy here to help put this on to help keep the water out of it as well it's a nice little extra guard so down below that is going to be where our water station is located uh, basically up at the very top here we got our black tank flush this guy here is a sprayer inside the black tank. It sprays around and gets the nastiness out. So basically when you're done camping, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get yourself a black hose, keeps it simple, black tank, black hose. And I'll explain that in here in just a second with the city water as well. Uh, but make sure you use a pressure regulator. On the back side, there's a plastic check valve. Too strong a water pressure can damage that check valve. Okay, but then you're gonna hook that up, turn it on, and then open, open your black tank valve handle first then turn it on 
okay? You're gonna start dumping until the elbow, you'll usually comes with a clear elbow, you'll start seeing the water coming out pretty clear. From there, you shut off the water at the spigot, unhook it from there, let that water kind of drain out, and then unhook from here. Next is the city water. So with the city water, once again, you're gonna use a pressure regulator at the spigot. From there, your options of an inline water filter if you want one. And then from there, your white or blue water drinking hose. Then you'll hook up to here. You'll be able to use the cold side right away. You do have to wait for the water heater to fill up with water before the hot side is available. Of course, then you still have to heat it up. And then this side here is gonna be your fresh water connection. Basically, you're gonna hook it up here, turn it on, you'll start filling the fresh tank. Okay, basically you're gonna read the monitor inside. When it reads full, make sure you shut the water off. Basically, your drain for him is gonna be, oh, he's gonna be located over here in, in between our tires, it looks like. They like to put them in some tricky spots, but right there is gonna be, you're gonna have two hoses here and there is actually another white hose on the other side. Okay, so one, so the two hoses on this side, one is gonna be so you can drain the fresh water tank when you're done camping. The second hose is gonna be basically your breather hose or overflow tube. And then the line on the other side is your breather tube. Basically though, if you're not paying attention to that monitor, once that tank is full, water will start coming out of both of those spouts. Okay, then that tells you, hey, I'm overfilling my tank. Uh, you wanna get that shut off right away. All right, as we come around the back, we're gonna have our spare tire. Up above, it is pre-wired for an observational backup camera. And then I are now installing an on-the-go on ladder receiver up there. So it's an aftermarket ladder that it's telescopes down so it'd fit in the storage compartment. But it's got two hooks that hook right on it. It'll telescope and then you're able to climb up and inspect your roof. Okay, it is meant for inspections only. Basically, you're trying to make sure that the lap sealant hasn't created air bubbles from being pulled down the road and it's gotten hot and softened up from the sun or it has started to dry out and starts cracking. When that happens, you're just gonna kind of make sure you pull that excess off for the air bubble and then you're gonna fill that with lap sealant. Same thing with the uh, cracked crackness of the sealant. Clean that surface up and put new lap sealant down. It is recommended that you wanna overlap only a few times and it usually is recommended you wanna peel all that off and then put fresh down. Once you start putting, adding those multiple layers, multiple layers of lap sealant, it starts to defeat its purpose of it's trying to do its job. Back here's where we're gonna have our hookups for our park ground cable or our satellites. One's gonna be for the living room, one is for the bedroom. Uh, with the park ground cable though, you do have to make sure the TV antenna booster is turned off and I will show you where that is located once we have stepped inside. Right here's where our uh, controller is to drop the rear jacks, stabilizer jacks. As we come around, once again, you're able to bring the TV outside, hook it up here, and you got a 110 plug, and then your port to plug in for the coax. Here's our hole for our manual crank for the other side. So we can't quite see the tires, but basically your tires, you do have to make sure that the lug nuts are torqued at 50, 100, and 200 miles. Um, and they are torqued to 110 foot pounds. And then these guys here says they are the Goodyear Endurance. It even tells you in nice bold letters that the tires are to be topped off at 80 PSI at all times. I always like to recommend whenever you're traveling, first time you leave the campground, you're getting ready to head home, you're making all the turns to get out of there, but you go, first place we normally go is the gas station to refuel before we head home. While you're refueling, you can check the lug nuts. You're knocking out two birds with one stone. Uh, we are going to come back to our steps here in just a minute. They do provide a little latch here so you can hook your dog up. So if you wanted to have him out hanging outside, he's got a nice cool place he can hide from the sun underneath the unit. Or if you had your awning out, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment. And then you do got two radio or two speakers for your outside radio. And we will show you that once we step inside as well. And then on this side over here, basically we're gonna have our manual cranks. Basically this guy here is gonna be for your tongue jack. This one is going to be for our stabilizers. And then our third one here is going to be for your slide room. It is a three quarter. 
a lot of times uh, a lot of people would just usually get up a three-quarter socket and put it on their drill and do it that way because it's it's a lot of hand cranking just to let you know all right so we're gonna come back and talk about the steps here uh, one thing you do have to know with these steps is that whenever you go to bring these steps up or down the door does have to be in the all the way open position the reason for that is because this guy right here can catch the screen door if you're not careful and cause damage to the screen door basically these guys here will just lock right behind there and they stay secured when the door is closed for travel these guys here so you can adjust the feet so you can adjust them down and the reason for that is and i'm going to go ahead and bring these down so we can show you that the reason for that is because you want to try to have this as flat with the threshold as possible uh, so this side's actually nice and flat pretty good right there but i'm looking over here at this side it's actually elevated just a hair so it looks like this leg here could go up just one and give us a nice little little smoother edge on that uh, this guy is elevated too high off that threshold can cause uh, issues to both the screen door and the entry door all right as we step inside your fire starter is always going to be located right at the entry door at the lower corner but we're going to have our control panel right here so with the control panel basically up top tells us all our tank statuses and it even tells you tanks may vary by the mo uh, model because this guy only has one toilet, so it only has one black tank and doesn't have two. Um, but basically, you got your fresh tank. It'll tell you your battery status. It's going to read full because we're plugged in, so it's charging the battery for us. Uh, black one, it's going to be your main toilet. Gray one is usually the kitchen sink. Gray two is going to be for the bathroom sink and shower, and then you do not have a gray three. Uh, most times the grade three is if there is a washer and uh, a washer hookup model uh, Then you have the water pump. You're only going to be using the water pump if you're using the fresh water tank If you're hooked to city water, you do not need this This one here is going to be the gas option for the water heater So if you want to run it off the electric make sure it's outside, but make sure there is water in the tank first That is very important uh, Then you got your tank heaters. These guys are little 12 volt heating pads that are on the bottom of the tanks these guys have built-in uh, thermostats to monitor the, the tank temperature, and once they get below a certain temp, they will kick on and will heat and will start heating them back up. Uh, once the temperatures do get below a certain level, they are only 12 volt. They do struggle to keep things from freezing, so just please be mindful of that. Next, we're going to have our lights. Our first one here is going to be our ambiance lights above the slides. Our next one here was going to be for our awning lights. And then our third one is for our ceiling lights inside the coach. We got our awning to bring our awning in or out. One thing that you always should note though is when you are, if you plan on going anywhere, it is recommended you should always bring your awning in. Uh, right here are actually, these guys here are these arms are actually considered to be pitch, a pitch point. So you can actually grab these, pull them down when the awning's fully extended out, and you can create a pitch for it. These guys are meant to only be as a shade protectant. They should not be out when there is rain. All right, so what is coming in next we're going to have our slide rooms one and two here this one here our main one is going to be for the bedroom or for the kitchen side and then our other one is for the dinette and recliner side when you hear that clicking sounds when you want to stop and then this side here is going to be for your awning that's on our uh, door side slide over here all right as we go move on we're going to move on in here into the bedroom uh, basically with the bedroom each side has its own individual closet space and drawer uh, Then you do have cubbies on each side. I believe the cubbies do have a 110 and USB hookups on each side as well We do have some storage underneath also And then we have our little closet area in this closet area though There's gonna be two screws right here that you will remove 
you'll take this panel out and this is actually where the back of that water heater is so like i said right now and this is going to be winterized uh, so the two knobs on the back are actually churned to where a line will actually go wraps around the water heater or pretty much bypasses the water heater so no antifreeze would go inside so what you would do is you're going to hook up to your city water you're going to turn on all your faucets and start running everything through till you don't see any more pink all right from there make sure you shut the water off take the pressure off of the lines and then from there you're going to turn those two knobs uh, back behind there to allow that water to go into the tanking to be able to come out but make sure that your anode rod is in and it is snug tight right here is where our tv antenna booster is located so if you guys are using the campground cable that is being provided to you by your camp source uh, you do want to turn this guy off just by pushing that button now these guys are always going to be located in different areas uh, a different model uh, may have it behind the TV in the living room. Okay, so most of the time these guys are usually going to be either in the bedroom area or behind the TV in the living room area. Uh, those are usually the two main places you'll find the booster. Uh, usually the booster does need to be on. Uh, depending on models, once again, it will, it's usually um, power, you know, the, it'll power the uh, signal for the uh, radio which I believe I've seen an antenna for the radio, so it has its own antenna, uh, but basically your source for the TV. We're gonna do a little shuffle here. Do a little side shuffle. <laughs> so inside here basically is gonna be our bathroom area. Um, basically you got your sink, you got your little medicine cabinet area here. You got storage here for your uh, towels and underneath as well. Then we have the shower. Uh, basically with the shower, it's got, like I was saying, it has the same style sprayer head is going to be on that outside uh, shower. Even when you go to winterize, even if you never use that shower all summer, you still want to antifreeze, you still want antifreeze to go through that sprayer outside. A lot of people will forget about it. Uh, but basically what that button does is it reduces that flow of water because you only have a six gallon water heater. The average American uses 38 gallons of hot water when they take a shower, so you're just already outmatched. Uh, basically, what we're just what it tries to do is try to get you a little longer shower with your hot water. And then this guy here shuts and locks. Whenever you go to open this guy, you do have from the inside you would kind of pull forward a little bit and then pull it towards you to release it. That's when you're on the inside of the shower. And then there is a GFCI outlet right here. Uh, basically, if you're trying to use that outlet, it ain't working. That means the GFCI has been tripped. So you generally want to try to look and see, make sure. Uh, a lot of times that will usually happen uh, when someone's trying to use an electric skillet and a blow dryer, you know, a blow dryer at the same time. That's usually what it always is. Uh, oh, you know what? Real quick, we're gonna step back here. I did forget to show you one thing real quick. Uh, basically the rear air conditioner or the bedroom air conditioner is manual only okay uh, it'll always show you our first, our knob shows you low fan low fan the reason for that is because these style um, air conditioners are designed to where you can install a heat strip or heat pump to it and then you're actually able to um, get some heat from the air conditioner it just pull it pulls uh, cooler air in and warms it up for you uh, but basically with this uh, it doesn't have that so your control knob says low fan low fan then high fan and then it'll say low cool and high cool and then this one here is going to be your temperature adjustment setting if it's all the way down it's just going to be on and running it'll make you feel like you're in an ice box all right so now we'll come back here now we're going to talk about our our ac in the main living area here above my head uh, basically it's ran off this guy and so is the furnace uh, we'll go ahead and hit this we're going to start in the off position here uh, so when you first turn it on it's going to show you fan low and fan high and the, you know that's just going to be your fan next is going to be cool high and cool low and these two settings here the air conditioner will just continuously run it does not matter what you have the thermostat set to and then you have the cool low auto and cool high auto and then that's where it would shut on and off to your desired set temperature 
And then the last option would be heat. As you see, it's set for 96 degrees, so we want to go ahead and crank that guy down. It's going to probably try to turn on, but it ain't going to come on because we have no propane right going to it right now. And then once again, we're right back at the off position. <clears throat> this unit is pre-wired uh, pre for um, a Wi-Fi extender or a booster. Uh, you got USB hookups for charging. You got storage down below and up above. Uh, down here is going to be our fuse control panel box. Basically, everything that runs off the sure power, you got to make sure you're plugged into a sure power line. is going to be on your breakers. And this is where your GFCI is located right here is on this one right here. So basically, if I was to push this button, I just kind of performed the test on the GFCI outlets and purposely tripped it. Turn it off. Flip it back on to come back. If you come out here or you come and you see these outlets ain't working, you'll look, you'll probably see a light that's, that came on on this guy. Uh, anything that runs off the battery is going to be on the fuses. And once again, everything is labeled right there for you as well. While I'm also down here, right here is going to be where your LP slash carbon monoxide detector is located. Uh, it is recommended that you test this guy every 9 to 14 days. And all you got to do simply do with this model is push this button. And it's going to start performing its test. And then going back to green. That's all you got to do. Okay. It is always recommended that you do test this guy. Okay. If this guy goes off, it means it's sensing something in the coach. You do want to take those emergency precautions. Uh, basically, first person out the door is going to turn off the propane canisters. Uh, second person out is trying to open a couple of doors. Don't be trying to turn on no, uh, no fans or anything like that. We're not trying to create a spark, um, but then get out and get 50, at least 50 feet away for about 15 minutes and then come back in. I always like to say the first place you usually want to try to check is the stove. A lot of times those button, those knobs will get pushed in and twisted and you just, you didn't even realize it. It happens, okay? Generally, there's only two places that propane technically come into your coach. One's the stove, the other is the furnace. Um, so if it is not the stove, it starts going off again, do have a camper brought in and looked at because um, you potentially have a, a you know a leak and that is very important okay uh, next we're gonna have our fridge you got your freezer up top and it is a 12 this looks like it is the 12 volt style fridge uh, so basically you got your settings up here uh, it does have an off-grid mode so what that is kind of nice about this feature is it's designed to where if you have it in these two settings it's not trying to pull as much power from the battery. Uh, so that solar power should be able to help keep up with this. Uh, but just know though, like when, and it's, when it's summertime, it's near 100 degrees. Uh, a lot of these, the fridges are gonna struggle. They're gonna struggle. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Um, same with the air conditioners. Most air conditioners are uh, designed to only put out a 20 degree difference of what's outside. So if it's 100, 100 degrees outside, and your camper's hitting 79, it, it's doing good. It is honestly doing good. Uh, next, we're gonna have the microwave. Uh, with the microwave, uh, basically it's pretty self-explanatory. We like to recommend setting the, the clock. Uh, you guys go out and hang out with your friends and go do some stuff. We come back and you see that the clock is not set on our microwave anymore. Well, that shows us that there was a power failure. We need to find out if that's from the campsite or the electric company, okay? Certain sites or certain certain camp areas can have power surges when there's a mass amount of people in, in, at the lots. Uh, so you just always got to be kind of mindful of that. Uh, we got storage down below, uh, drawers, things along that, you know, your silverware drawer. We got our owner's manual located inside here. Uh, with the owner's manual, basically, <clears throat> um, most of the manuals for the appliances are going to be in the coach. Um, I know a lot of the company manufacturers are now starting to go paperless um, and you download a PDF file offline. Uh, next we're going to have our hood range here. You got your fan and your light. Um, there is actually a vent on the outside of the unit that would have to be open when you go to use the exhaust fan. Uh, this guy does get flipped open when you go to cook. From here what you're going to do basically is you'll just turn that to the flame icon and you will turn the light. This here is your spark igniter. Uh, this guy here is going to be for the oven. Same concept. You're going to turn it to that flame icon and push and hold it in. And then spark until it lights. 
A lot of times if you angle this window or this, this door just right, you can actually see a reflection of the igniter down below and you'll be able to see when it's lit instead of trying to have your head all the way down here and trying to do this number. Uh, it can get pretty pretty contorted if you ain't careful. Uh, um, <clears throat> this drawer down here so you can store some pots and pans. One thing you do have to know, and it's a very important must, is these guys are not built the, they're not built that strong. Basically, you're not trying to put cast iron skillets or anything along those lines in there. You want to use lightweight cooking pans. And usually, uh, like this is a Furion model, like Dometic brands, um, they usually recommend uh, your pots and pans are no larger than 10 inches in diameter. And I think Atwood's actually only 8 inches. Okay? All right, so next we're going to have the uh, basically your TV area. We already showed you the booster. Um, basically, our TV remote here. Turn this guy on. <clears throat> it is actually a smart. It's a smart TV, so it actually takes a minute to think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, while it's doing that, as you see now, now it's thinking. Uh, Pretty much this guy here is going to be for your radio down below. Uh, basically, to turn it on, you give it a second, it will say welcome. Uh, as the Pasta House Company. Enjoy one of our daily specials or try and then basically from there, you got a Zone 1 and a Zone 2. Zone 1 is going to be these speakers here. Zone 2 is going to be those outside speakers. You're able to pretty much change the channels here. Uh, you can, uh, the volume on here as well. You also got the remote. Then it's got different modes. Uh, basically, auxiliary end port, which is right there. Uh, you got the TV, so it has a hookup on the back to where you can hook up a uh, TV uh, for surround sound kind of effect. Uh, if you're hooking up a DVD player, and then it's got Bluetooth mode, so you can you know hook your phone up to it. And you'll be able to listen to music off your phone and then back to radio. And then when you push the power button, it'll tell you goodbye. It's even nice and thoughtful for you. All right, so our TV is done thinking because it's super smart. Uh, we're going to choose live TV. Uh, once you have uh, connected this to the internet, uh, you guys will be able to have your other features for your Netflix, Amazon Prime, uh, kind of things along that nature. Uh, but right now we're just picking up our free local digital channels that are over the air uh, basically from the roof or from the antenna on the roof whenever you get to a new area you usually do got to scan for channels with that you're going to push your little three line guy right there and then you're gonna go oh I didn't move fast enough for it then you're gonna go all the way to the end where it says settings from there, we're going to go down the channel, channel source, you'll shoot, you'll hit tuner and then it'll start scanning the channels for you. Uh, right now, as you see, we picked up 43 channels from our area. And that's all there really is with that guy. Uh, then our last remote here is going to be for the fireplace. Uh, basically with the fireplace you'll turn that guy on with your power button then you have your temperature setting so you can change from i believe it is low or high and that's just your fan speed there is no temperature setting itself double zero is just going to give you that flame ambiance look so if you're just trying to have a little nice romantic evening you can lay out a nice little rug and uh have some wine and sit in front of a nice little fire if you wanted to uh, then you got your, this guy here changes the color of the rocks. And then the other one's going to, you can change the color of the flames. Ooh, pretty. <laughs> and then we're back to off. Next, we're going to have our trifold bed here. Nice thing about these guys, they're not built like they were from the 80s and 90s where they weighed like 100 pounds. Uh, each side does have a 110 hookup and a USB hookup for charging. But basically, this guy just lifts up. You pull these legs out here like so, and then pull it forward. This guy will sit down like so, and then you just take this back piece here, 
this folds down, and then you put your cushions there to kind of fill in that void in the back. Nice and simple. Uh, also back behind here is going to be the fire exit window. Basically, you lift this guy like so. Lift the other side. That window is on a hinge. The whole thing will fling open so you can get out if you could not make your way to the door. Like I said, these guys are real nice. They're not super heavy. Uh, nice and lightweight. And it goes back together pretty nice and easily. So then next we're going to have the recliners. Uh, basically with the recliners, you got storage compartment inside here. It's like where you like to keep a lot of the remotes, but it's also got a USB hookup so you can hook up and charge your phone. But each side has manual handles. They're usually located right here on the side. They're usually kind of tucked in on the side as well. But you would just pull this guy open or pull it up. And as you see, it's going to recline. And then you're usually able to recline back pretty nice and good. This guy also has the light up cup holder. Although I usually don't have the greatest. There we go. I usually don't have the greatest luck of getting them to come on. Uh, but basically it just lights up this cup holder here for you. And it's got a little ambiance lights under night, underneath as well. So if you guys are you know, watching a movie, you can have the lights off and just give that little ambiance light like a theater kind of setting style. Let's see if I can get it to turn off now. See, I have no luck with these guys. <laughs> uh, these guys here you do turn on and off by hand. Uh, basically the ones above there as well. Um, your smoke detector is located up above. Uh, we do have a light switch here on our island. That's basically going to be a little ambiance lights underneath. And then we're going to have our dinette area here. The chairs do actually lift up on the back side so you can have a little storage area there. And then they do have straps to be secured during travel. And then the light switch is going to be located right here. Uh, usually most light switches for the dinette is usually located at the at the base of the light uh, usually the lights are usually different from different models so uh, every now and then you might see them where they actually have it on a switch on the side but once again that varies on model um, from there we have made our way back to the entry door hopefully this is uh, knowledgeable and informational for you if you guys do have any questions please feel free to call us and we do our best to answer those for you, uh, questions for you over the phone thank you and have a wonderful day